Hi, this is Angel Jones. I love great conversations where life's journey is communicated not only through words, but tones and emotions. Explosive expressions that allow you to feel what they felt and learned. A fool learns only from his own mistake, while the wise learn from their own and from those others have made. Thanks for being here with us. Good night, good night, Raoul Anderson. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? Well, it's not night, right, Raoul, for you, right? It's not. It's uh, two o'clock in the afternoon for me. Ah, I, I could live with two o'clock in the afternoon right now, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, Raoul, tell me, which of your talents is responsible for us meeting? Well, um, that's a very good question. Um, I suppose I received an email from you because I had the interview on um, the Entrepreneur on Fire uh, podcast, and uh, so which talent was it? My my ability to res- respond to an invitation, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I'm guessing it's a lot more than that, Raul. So, what is your specialty? Um, my specialty. I guess um, my 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 key um, specialty would be in problem solving. That's what I do. I'm a problem solver. Hmm. Who did you learn this skill from? Um, many people. Uh, basically, I suppose it's uh, started from when I was young. You know, my um, my dad was um, a refrigeration mechanic, and you know, fixing physical things. I remember working on cars with him and and doing that sort of thing. And then as I've gotten older, you know, going through school, um, just learning to to troubleshoot things. And now obviously I work in the IT field and it's always about troubleshooting. (laughs) So (laughs) Mm. that's, yeah. Why would you continue to repeat the skill of troubleshooting? Uh, Because I enjoy it. I love solving problems. I love making things better. Hmm. That's intriguing. Well, tell us a bit about the business you offer. Um, uh, well, we do IT consulting. Uh, we also do um, specific um, IT services. So in in the US, for example, we're doing Wi-Fi and RV parks at the moment. Um, we offer IT outsourcing services for, for other organisations throughout Canada and Australia. Um, and... Yeah, that's, I suppose, the, the crux of what we do. Mm. So if someone wants to connect with you to access your services, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, in North America, it would be the, just email sales at Uh In Australia, it would be sales at ansonmorgan.com.au. Wonderful. Well, my friend, tell me one thing that you've done consistently over the past three years, please. Over the past three years, um Consistently, I have um, <clears throat> called lots of people <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> I, I, I find that by this time of my day, my, my voice is nearly worn out because I spend uh, basically from 9 a.m. through to about 2 p.m. on the phone uh, with customers, vendors, um, staff, and that sort of thing, um, you know, just catching up, making sure everything's everyone's on top of everything, and um, yeah, that everything's tracking. Wow, how does that make you feel? Um, sometimes good, sometimes not so good. But mm. um, I, I, I enjoy connecting with people, so mostly it's it's all positive. It's only when there's uh, challenging conversations to be had that it's less than exciting. But you know, everyone has to to go through those things as well. Love it. So tell me about conversations. It seems as though you are a conversationalist. Is that (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yes, yes. Um, It it is, and I am a conversationalist. Sometimes I I think maybe I speak a little bit too much. I I think I get that from from my dad's side of the family because he talks a lot as well. But, um, yeah, I enjoy... um, talking to people, finding out who they are, what they do, um, you know, how I can help them and, um, yeah, sometimes how they can help me, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, I love it.
love it. I love it. Why would you suggest someone do that? Um, um, exploit conversations. Sorry, why would I say people should do it? Yes. Because it enriches your life and it enriches other people's lives as well. Um, I think it's, you know, we're as a as people, we are designed to be in relationship with each other. And if you're not talking to people, you're not in a relationship, are you? Mm. Love it. Raul, let's switch gears for a bit now. Let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Well, that sounds nice. Raul. <laughs> what is your earliest childhood memory? <laughs> my earliest childhood memory. Crikey. Um, um, my memory is not very good, but I do remember I would have probably been maybe three or four years old. I remember um, we used to live in this old farmhouse and my dad was at work and me and my eldest sister um, – were were playing out in the yard and I remember mum coming out and saying get inside and because there was a big snake out on the uh, on the on the footpath that we just were playing right near we hadn't seen it and she you know took care of it big spade all those sorts of things but uh, that's probably my earliest childhood memory hmm. why do you think this memory is so clear uh, I don't know I guess because it was such a shock at the time it was like wow what's going on <laughs> <laughs> What was her reaction? Mm. Was her reaction of fear or is it... My reaction or... Her reaction, your mom's. Her reaction. Oh, yeah, it would have been a fear for sure. Making sure because I don't know if you're aware, but I mean, I live in Tasmania and we have some... uh, We don't have any non-venomous snakes, let me put it that way. So every every snake is is potentially life-threatening. I've spoken to almost over... 900 and something people and um wow interestingly enough the one of the persons that had a similar type earliest childhood memory misty gilbert was her name and you know she expressed how how fear can be transferred from a parent to a child and um, mm-hmm. she just she just expressed that. So it was a similar thing, you know. Her mother came and they saw, she saw the snake, and her mother practically screamed. And um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, it, it, it was it was something along those lines for me as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I remember just looking out the window and seeing her, you know, stopping this snake in its path with a, a long handled shovel. And um, yes, it was yeah. quite memorable. Well, the th- the thing is, when I started this goal to have fifteen hundred and nine conversations in three months, um, mm-hmm. I had Misty before I started this, and uh, but now that I've had these conversations, there's an additional part that I add where I act, where I say, all right, um, can I offer the interpretation that that thought picture just created in my mind, and uh, so I'll do that now. Sure. Uh, and you know it's really intriguing that that you are so connected with how it is possible to transfer fear mm-hmm. and anything else through a conversation and how you're doing mm-hmm. that now in your life because hey you started this conversation and you were super calm <laughs> to the beginning <laughs> you know you were you were because you were very mon- meticulous Mm-hmm. understanding how what could be transferred by the way you communicated it and like oh I'm, absolutely i'm guessing you, yeah. that's what you do that is your strength even from today right absolutely i i had the um i have the privilege of of um i suppose being a uh, almost a mentor to a, another young it guy who is um in um, North America, who has his own company, and you know he's probably. I mean, I've been doing this for seventeen years now, and he's he's, you know, sort of uh, twelve years behind me, and and he he picks my brains every so often on you know what his next step should be and what he should look out for and all those sorts of things, and and um, and one of the things he commented to me on was that. He can't believe how calm I always am. It's like, well, <laughs> why wouldn't I be? <laughs> There's nothing to be uncalm about, yeah. um, hmm. you know. 
Yeah, it's so. amazing. It's amazing how it connects, you know, that, that earliest childhood memory and the thing that you are functioning in. Uh, it's really, really an amazing brand builder, you know. Um, um, and right there, right, mm-hmm. it's like the IT world, right? It's, um, you know, don't let the snake that you're seeing be the thing that, that, that makes you be who you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and the IT world is so much like that, right? So I've done some IT in my life, and it's so much oh, really? like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I, I did MCSE, right? Back, oh, way yeah. back in cool. the day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which uh, well, back in the NT four days or or f- NT four beyond that two thousand NT four yeah. 2000, NT four two thousand wow. yeah. Straight, that was right between the switch, right? Two thousand and NT four, yeah. Mm-hmm. MCSE, yeah, cool. yeah, that was back in the days. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah, so so I fa- remember doing those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we fast forward to when you were 12, what was your favorite song? 12? Oh, gee. Um, it would have been... Um, I'm just trying to think. Sure. How long ago is that? That's a long time ago. That's like 1980, roughly. I have no idea. No, not 1980, 1990, sorry, 1988, which would have been, um, was grade six. Right, or seven. And... It would have been uh, most likely a Bon Jovi song <laughs> back in that era. It's my life. Yes. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I don't know if that was about in those days, but I've always enjoyed Bon Jovi. Um, so it would have been around that era. All right. All right. So is is it's my life? Is that one of the songs? Do you think that is it? Yeah. Or bad medicine. Or. Um, you know, sort of any of the Slippery When Wet album, Raise Your Hands. So it's amazing to me, right? How when the name of the song you choose, how it connects to the AU childhood memory. Alright, so it's like, mm-hmm. could, and I'm just connecting brands here, right? So it's like, yeah, the sneak yeah, sure. is definitely Slippery When Wet, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> You uh, probably wouldn't have even heard of Jimmy Barnes, would you? I, I have. I mean, Cold Chisel? Yes, oh, I you have? have? Yeah. Wow. That's, that's amazing. I didn't think he made his way further out of Australia. It's um, good. Yes, I, I also enjoy all that sort of music as well back in those days. So. Mm. Well, Raul, well, we've arrived at our destination, but before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form, so it's yes or no, or a bit more. Mm-hmm. Raul, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Uh, yes. Are you married? My children. Oh. I am married, and I have four children. Wow, boys and girls? Three boys, one girl. Wow. Do you believe in God? Absolutely. Do you yes. have an inner circle of friends? I do. Yes, I have two fairly close friends that I share most things with. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? More than three hours a day? Who's got three hours a day to watch TV? (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, The TV is on for three hours a day or more because I have four children, but uh, I don't sit down and necessarily watch it for three hours a day. How about three hours a week? Oh, yeah, three hours a week for sure. All right. Yep. What about screen time, the phone and or the computer? More than eight hours a day or less than eight hours oh, a yeah. day? Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, man, I right. live on it. <laughs> 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 I, my life ceases to exist if I don't have a computer or a phone in front of me. Yeah, yeah. Raul, this was a great pleasure, my friend. Before you leave, is there anything you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Um, well, uh, that's a very good question. Um, I suppose, can I just ask you a question? Sure. What prompted you to do, to want to do the 1,509 conversations in three months? Oh, that's a great What made question. you get to that point? Yeah, yeah. Because so, to be honest, that was the thing that made me go, I'm actually really interested in talking to this guy. Yeah. Um, what's it all about? <laughs> how, yeah. how did you get there? Yeah, it is a 
that is a loaded question um so uh, yeah so folks uh, this is going to take a bit more than 12 minutes but raul did ask the question when you were listening to this right um <laughs> raul <laughs> uh, um yeah so in uh, yeah most definitely at first um so i i'm a big john lee dumas guy in terms of listening mm-hmm. to podcasts and when so i created the podcast based off of um um zig ziglar's um born to win right so my wife and i mm-hmm. sit down and we plan every year and it's only been it's it, this year we'll make it the third year that we've been doing this um so we focus on 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 goals right so we use mental spiritual career physical personal financial family mm-hmm. you know zig has a wheel that he has and he has each one is a spoke and he says if one is let's say eight out of ten and the others are 10 out of 10 you're going to have a bumpy ride mm-hmm. so we backtrack now from there and we set those goals so that's for the for the personal side of us of our lives our family side and then there's the business side and he has another thing where he talks about sales administration leadership operations and marketing so in planning our business for this year the lead magnet we created one was a podcast. Now, I've, I'm, I'm so guilty of setting big audacious goals. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm here setting my podcast goal. And I said, I'm going to beat Johnny Dumas's episode count <laughs> by the end of this year, right? Yep. <laughs> so this is me, Jan- December 2015, right? And um, yep. so Johnny Dumas is going to be at 1,582 at the end of this year. And I said, I'm going to beat him convincingly. So I'm going to go for <laughs> 1,585, right? <laughs> yep. So that is how the number came about because I got to 76 and I was about to give up. And uh, because I started and I realized, wow, this is a lot of work. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's off the journey. It is talking to a lot of people takes a lot of time and effort. It does. And then there's the editing side and then there's the technical side. It's a lot mm-hmm. of work. So I, I reached there and I went to this conference in Tennessee called Coaching with Excellence, um, really focusing on my wife. Which, she's an author and she simplifies health disorders through poems. And um, we were there. And, um, uh, you know, it's like a lightning bolt hit. And it, it's the lightning bolt song that like never give up, never give in. You said you were going for this goal. And you need to go for this goal. So I came back to Trinidad, all cranked up. I remember there was a guy sitting next to me because I started scribbling on my trusty yellow yellow pad. Shout out to my Mm -hmm. wife for introducing me to the yellow pad, right? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm an IT guy, right? Like, why would I need a yellow pad? But I understand it now. I understand it now. Hey, there's a great value in the yellow pad. Trust me, Raul. (laughs) So (laughs) I started scribing, you know, what would be required. And I said, okay, I'll do it for three months so that by the end of um, November, I would have that month off so we could go back into our planning for 2017. And uh, Mm -hmm. I came back and I had a meeting set up with a guy called Tom Schwab. And for just that was different. That was something totally different. And Tom, when I told him my goal, Tom said, hey, Angel, you should make that a Guinness World Record, right? (laughs) Because Tom is going for Guinness World Record for the most interviewed on podcasts. Okay. So that is why it's in his uh, his his eyesight, right? So that is how the Guinness World Record part came. That is how fifteen hundred and nine came. Um, but just to drill a bit a bit deeper, my friend, I wanted mm-hmm. to identify the human aspect of the entrepreneur. I wanted mm-hmm. to uncover that because I believe there's a compassion, there's an empathy, there's a there's a bit more. So while it is important to say, hey Raul, how much money did you make this year? And that has, <laughs> while it has its value, right? I, I honestly yep. believe the thing I wanted to find out more were these questions. And thus yep. far, it's been amazing what has happened from yep. setting a big audacious goal um, yeah that's great so that is the story yeah. in a nutshell very good so okay well that's that's amazing and i think it's great 
well done. And I'm uh, really looking forward to hearing how you go with, with getting through that last one with John Lee doing this. I'm definitely going to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you asked me for a parting thought. I suppose the one thing that I try and um, teach my kids to do um, and uh, that I think is just a universal principle is wherever you are, whatever you're doing, try and add value to someone else because you will reap the benefits of it somewhere in, in, your, in your life, not necessarily straight away, but um, helping others is what, you know, makes us, uh, well, it, it pushes my buttons and I, I like being able to help other people. Mm. And so adding value to others is always worthwhile, even if it costs you in the short run. Mm. I love it, love it. Well, let me tell you. So you will be eight eighty three plus seventy six, episode nine hundred and fifty nine, right? And, nine fifty nine. Um, yeah, I'll tell you that. Um, you know, Zig Ziglar has a saying. He says, "Help enough other people get what they want, and then you will get what you want." Yep. And I think that really sums it up in terms of what you're speaking about. So it took me nine hundred and fifty eight conversations, or a bit more you know to get to you yep. and i'm really glad <laughs> that when i <laughs> that at this point you know this is the conversation i'm having because it just speaks masses to the core of the reason why i'm doing this so thank you very much Raul. yeah no worries hmm. good on you angel i um yeah, I, I assume that you're on a fairly tight time frame to get to your next interview. Yes, my friend. Well, it's amazing how things work, though. I had James earlier on today, and you fell smack middle in a time that, you know, I could close off now. But let me close off by saying... Oh, nice. Raul Anderson, thank you for being on 12-Minute Convos, or a bit more, with Angel Jones. Thanks, Angel. I appreciate it. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Amazing audience, before you leave, there's one person I'd like to introduce you to, Amanda Jones. She is my wife and her passion is to educate, encourage, and empower. Hi, I'm Amanda Jones and I'm a registered nurse. Do you or someone you know have diabetes? According to the International Diabetes Federation, in 2015 worldwide, 415 million people were living with diabetes. Just as that figure is overwhelming, so too can the effects of diabetes be. So, to help simplify diabetes for both adult and child, I've used rhymes in my books, The ABCs of Diabetes for Children, and Poems for Patients, a focus on diabetes. At its simplest, rhymes help us to remember. If you, a child or friend, want an easy, reader-friendly way to know about diabetes, then get a copy of these books. For more details, you can go to poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.